What do they do? Little bastards. <laughs> yeah, you are. First, let me get this off my chest. It's important. Fox selected nine comedians to host this year's Emmys. Ellen DeGeneres, Daryl Hammond, Conan O'Brien, Gary Shandling, Martin Short, John Stewart, Wanda Sykes, Brad Garrett, and George Lopez. Okay, all good. What have I missed in this business? I've never been invited to do any of these hosting jobs on any of these stupid shows on cable or regular TV my whole career. I've been around forever. It's getting a little embarrassing. Okay? I don't even want to do it. But they don't know that when they don't ask me. You know? Am I like a weirdo? Someone's going to have to tell me. Am I, is there something just raggedy about me? Well, you don't think you can sell your stupid products with my face out there? I'm getting mad and I'm... N All right, let's talk about uh, the jeans. The jeans, the fashion, the culture. Hi, ladies. The fashion. Hi. You got the culture. Jeans are getting lower. Now, they look great, obviously. That's not the issue. All right? But the issue is, is this good for society? You see these girls walking on the street. Yes, you look great, but people can't concentrate on other things they got to do, you know? <laughs> really, it's not what they, it's not, it's what they represent. It's a bacchanalian culture, you know? <laughs> a pagan feast. This country was formed by the pilgrims. You know how much work we got to accomplish in the early years? All those skanks dressed up like the Taliban ladies? <laughs> Let me tell you something. If we're going to do this, fine, I understand. Look, I love it too. But at least put like scientific facts or economic news or, <laughs> I don't know, biblical quotes or something, right? Just to make it work with. Nobody's ever going to come back from Mardi Gras with the cure for world hunger. <laughs>
That's a good point. Of course it's a good point. It gives you a false sense of security that they will be a whore. Yes, yeah. then slut. Yeah. No, but how does it make the real sluts feel that have been working on this for years, who take yeah. the job as a waitress, right. and now you can just go to the Gap or some other store and just do it instantly? But it's not right. But seriously, oh. what's going to be next? I mean, is it going to be that they have to get put your clothes on in order to rebel? The teens, like 20 years from now, you're going to be have to dress like the Amish to be rebellious? I mean, yeah, like, what's exactly. next? You're going to have to dress like a dress to be rebellious. You suck. <laughs> you know, my wife is still pretty hot. She's 48 years old, but she still looks pretty good. And she goes, well, what if I dress like that? I go, if you dress like that, maybe I'd nail you once in a while. But the thing is, hey, hey, it's my wife. Shut up. <laughs> you don't mind. I mean, I think it looks great. Fashion is beautiful, but at the same token, there's a lot of people out there that's not getting it. So I see some of these big oh, women oh showing stuff. And right. I saw one woman the other day. She was picking her jeans. I heard a voice come out, Aflac. <laughs> you know, like the Taliban, right? You got the Taliban. If all the women dressed in these things where they don't have to show, so it is kind of an equality in that the hot, it doesn't matter. You can't tell if the girl's hot or not. So yes. everybody kind of... Yes. Oh, so when having a daughter, I, I kind of like that whole thing. You do? I kind of like the idea. <laughs> I like the idea, too, on the same kind of subject that Saddam Hussein, just to get off the subject for a second, it all kind of ties together, <laughs> that he killed his, his daughter's husbands, right. and the daughters still love the father. And I just wish, not that I want to kill my daughter's boyfriend, <laughs> but just if he would know that I could, and it would be okay, just right. to have that power over him. Yeah. It would be nice to have, you don't have a daughter, so you wouldn't know, and you don't have a 15-year-old daughter and a 48-year-old wife, so one's coming of age and one's not <laughs> anymore, and, you know, <laughs> this one's getting breasts, and that one's getting whiskers, and she's menopausal, and she's getting zits, yeah, and my right. life is over. And it, it's, it's, you know what? It's funny, too. Like they, even the young girls, really like they're 12-year-old girls, like they'll be wearing these uh, low-riders, and they have, like, tattoos, right? And the, the small of their backs. Yes. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, like, great. outrageous. Oh, it's great. It's sexy, but from a 12-year-old, it's like, who are they expecting, company? I mean, it's strange to have that yeah, back there. And you know, it's funny, too, when you look at this, you know, it's always like the Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera right. thing, which I think is really hot. And then my wife sees this and goes, you look at this? You ever think about your daughter when you look at this? I go, no, I think about my daughter's friends. I think about that. <laughs> what about you? I think about this. I think about my daughter. My wife's a sick woman. She, oh. she needs help. So you don't feel like, and you know, not that you guys are responsible for the whole world, you don't feel like this is like a fall of Rome type thing, though? I, if Rome falls, I'm happy to go down with it. I mean, <laughs> what, what Rome are you talking about? Like, sexuality? The, uh, Sure, open it up. But don't you think that women have become even more objectified? It's getting, it's getting crazy. I mean, what, what next for us? I mean, I, you know, they, we're going to want to bone you either way. It doesn't um, matter. Well, it's just, what do you I, mean I, objectified? I, I, but, no, do you think because like, I want to bone you, that's objectifying you? You want to bone me? That's fantastic. No, I, we're trying to keep this under the dog. You're right now. I got I'm cash. <laughs> Mommy's back, baby. Mommy is back. Okay. <laughs> Folks, you go enlighten yourselves with these commercial revelations. We'll be right back. <laughs> Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn is brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. It's big. It's beef. All right. Well, well, well. FBI reports a 70% increase in teen prostitution across the country with a growing number from middle to upper middle class backgrounds. Uh, Bobby? Oh, boy. Well, let me tell you something. Let's forget about that last segment when I was talking about having a 15-year-old daughter because when we go into teenage prostitution, these are two separate situations. Okay. <laughs> First of all, you have a lot of young you hookers. Hope, right? No, I read about this article. So a lot of young uh, prostitutes, uh, they find the middle class, upper middle class, which in a lot of ways is wrong, but at the same time, you've got to realize that hookers today are much better educated because when they come from an upper middle class, I remember when I was a young man and I would go to see prostitutes. They weren't that bright, and it was very awkward because they had nothing to talk about. Okay? Well, now the fact that they're much better educated, and a lot of them, they find in the Midwest, by the way, at the Mall of America. And I've been to the Mall of America where these housewives are fat and bored, and these young kids today don't want to grow up to be like their parents, so they finally have a way out. Where by the time they're 18 years old, they actually have money <coughs> in the bank, they're professional hookers, and they get the hell out of, um, you know, the Mall of America and out of Minnesota. Right. Plus the fact that I have a teenage daughter, so having young hookers, now we have something in common. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the Strokes, I could talk to them about stuff. It's the MTV <laughs> generation. What kind of kid wants to deliver newspapers? I'm saying it's good for young people. Encourage yeah, them and to get that way, when, they, when uh -huh. they turn 18, 20, they can finally suck a decent because they've had <laughs> <and> they practice. 
you know, and, you know, and, and it, Am I wrong? No. no. It's a nice Catholic boy. Um, but, it, it, but you know, the, the thing is too, is that like they say that they're meeting their pimps at the Mall of America. They meet, 13 year old girls meet pimps, but I guess, you know, the kids today, the parents aren't home as much. I guess the pimp provides security. So in another way, it's like, who's your daddy? He's really taken literally here. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. you know I, I, I swear they get, and they say they get younger and young, you know, they make more money the younger they look. Well, oh, what a shocker. Oh, ageism hits prostitution. You know, because um, I, I don't remember my grandmothers around the world. You know what I'm saying? It's very naughty, very naughty. Seriously, uh, you got 13, you don't have Starbucks going out and trying to recruit 13 year old kids to work for a really crappy percentage of the profits. If you mm -hmm. legalize prostitution, you don't have all these problems with pimps trying to pick up, you know, <laughs> street kids. What? No, I, I want to live in your world. <laughs> <laughs> the, the girls with the low rates, the pros. I got daughters, so hey, yeah, I, yeah. I got Well, don't you feel. Life. All right, don't you feel you got daughters? Right. Don't you feel that uh, that that the problem is like say the Mall of America, pimps are allowed to roll around and stro troll these girls. Don't you feel like in the old school days, the cops would see a kid being a pimp, they beat his balls in, right. and he wouldn't be around anymore. Right. And now they right. don't even right. they can't even stop these guys. Yeah, but you know, I don't think the pimps today. Not are doing like, I mean, the pimps of yesteryear were like was that super fly with like a, a black man <laughs> with a funky hat and a feather. It was like very identified, very sexy. And now they're just sort of it. It could be just like some kid who looks like you know uh, you know some kid from Connecticut in like in a Or Donny Osmond. Or exactly. You know? So right. I don't think the, the cops even know. You guys haven't been to the Mall of America. Well, you know, it's, it's funny because at the Mall of America it's very interesting. They also have an amusement park with all these rides. So what they should have is a little sign. You must be as tall as I am to give oral because you should have. <laughs> no, only because I, there should be some kind of guidelines. It shouldn't be any kid. Just make sure they're old enough because it needs to be some safety and responsibility. Well, what's old and as a parent, I've always felt what's that. old enough. What's, I, I, I don't even is the issue the prostitution or the age? What at what uh, point are you at 18? Are you magically d ready to? Doug, this what? is what got you kicked out of the Tampa Improv that time. <laughs> 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 I just I mean, there's, 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 when you watch Ricky Lake, there's 16 year old girls out there, plenty ready 16, to be. Yeah. yeah. At, but, the, yeah, at the same yeah. time, there's 35 year old women who should have their <laughs> puttied shut like Barbie parts because they'll never really be good at it. At what age are you it's ready? It's true, buddy. Listen, on behalf we of all, the, you know, puttied up Barbie dolls. But anyway, um, no. But, but, but so don't you think that um, if, if they keep going up the younger teenage girls, shouldn't we be even pre prosecuting the Johns? What's wrong with these men going after 12 year old girls? I mean, what's sexy about that? It's scary. I guess if they're wearing their low rises, I guess then they well, are. Well, especially 12 today, it's the new 18, I think. Right, right. yeah. Well, listen, right. in hopes right. of the Deterring crime and bad behavior. Schools are installing webcams that will record every minute of a student's day. Now, this is every kid's nightmare when you went to school, right? You want right. to sit there and have people watching you do whatever the hell you were doing. But what do you guys think about this? Is this, uh, you know? It's frightening. I think privacy issues have been completely violated, and I just don't think, uh, you know, men can be trusted to watch little girls on tape. I just don't think it's right. I mean, it's going to be like, you know, fourth graders gone wild. Look what's you know? happening. <laughs> But you know, it's, and what if they, in Catholic school girls in those uniforms would be oh, really naughty. I didn't even think I mean, that. seriously. Ah, I didn't think but that either. the point is this. Kids can't, this all goes back to my other theory of a, a, a regime, a, a fascist right. regime. Oh, absolutely. In schools, they run schools now where always the crazy kids run the whole school. Yeah. So all the kids trying to learn, they can't run. They just sit there, coward. They can't learn nothing. They leave school early. Oh, so you're saying, so you're... Yeah. So I'm saying I, I approve of it. Well, See, also, I Except for the promoting yeah, boys. Tell you, oh, right. you put... Uh, cameras in schools, mm -hmm. put them on the teachers. Right. It's the unchecked power that needs to be watched, and that's what you're saying. Yeah, it's but not the teachers. Yeah. Unchecked yeah. power. He had all these people making thirty thousand dollars a year maximum. He was little kids. You think they're in there to take over the world? You know what? Then oh, take your kid out of school. Take it's your. Not you're worried about the kid homeschool. No, don't I'm have worried about. Every to. kid that gets homeschooled is eventually killed by its mother in Texas. My, I mean, that's my, what my, happens. Hey, hey, hey. Seriously. My daughter. Daughter. You guys paint around a dark picture of the world. <laughs> right. My what do you care? What do you care if is? you're innocent? What do you care if you're not doing anything? Yeah. 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 If you're not doing anything illegal oh, okay. while you're taking a dump, why don't we film you? Yeah, yeah, you're you're just, just, I mean, it's Big Brother. Should, and, yeah. Instead of spending money on the webcams, why don't we just give teachers better salaries and get some textbooks in the bloody class? No, what does it matter? Yeah. The point is that all, if you go to any poor school, the, the, the craziest kids reign right. and the other kids can't get an education. And it's partly the textbooks, but it's also partly because these crazy kids, teachers don't like to hit them. They don't have to do nothing but stand there. Those crazy the kids balls. don't want to be in school. Don't make them go. The crazy well, nobody kids make them the go. They go because where the peers are, they can torture. The crazy kids are the ones that need the cameras. Yeah. 
I was a crazy kid, and look what I'm doing. I'm exactly. watching. Hey, That's hey, not hey, what happened. Who, who, who judges? Uh, so yeah, I'll tell you who judges. Them. There's a final up between me and Wacky acting up in the class. And 12 crips in the back of the class, you know, shooting Absolutely. some kid because right, well, he raised his I, hand to answer a question. You, know, you, you don't think this is a privy C issue that when she started doing, like he said, you put the cameras in the school, then the, the, the bathroom. Sherry, the honestly, I don't use the word privacy, but <laughs> <laughs> I had that in Vietnam. So there's no privacy issue with that. I, I'm saying uh, <laughs> commercials are the guideposts of our economy. <laughs> <laughs> Watch and learn. We'll be right back. When we locked, when we locked up a f Oh boy, nothing can ruin your day like being asked the question, where do you see yourself in 10 years? So we went out last week, ruined a bunch of people's days. I'm gonna try to guess what these people think the future holds for them. Let's look at our first uh, lovely contestant. Where do I see myself in 10 years? Oh, you reassuring your daughter over a Folgers Viennese blend in some nice suburban house? <laughs> She's a very calm woman. Let's go to her. Probably dead. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about in the world. When, like, the Irma Bombeck, like, mother figure, suburban mother figure is fatalistic. <laughs> it's near the end. All right, let's, uh, next clip. What I say myself in the next 10 years? Uh, playing slide guitar for, like, white guys at a private college that want to be a blues band? I don't know. Doing Dick Vega lookalikes, the number one on the East Coast. Dick Vega lookalikes. What do you think does work for a Dick Gregory lookalike? If there's any Dick Gregory lookalike work, Dick Gregory will probably take it. <laughs> Sorry for the 40 years you spent in Angola on the chain gang. All right, next clip. Where do I see myself in 10 years? Uh, avenging your dojo in feudal Japan? I don't know. <laughs> Where? I hope to get a master's degree in a screenplay and turn out really fine movies every other year. A master's degree in script writing and what? Silent Bob versus Godzilla? What kind of movie are you going to make? Always <laughs> well, got that indie kind of, uh, all right. Who's next? Where do I see myself in 10 years? Oh, finally settling the lawsuit against Sam Ash for, uh, when they wouldn't uh, promote you out of percussion into amps, even though you were, the, you were there the longest of any employee. I don't know, where? Maybe in a nice flat in Soho. Sharon! All right. Let's go to the next clip. Where do I see myself in 10 years? Finally uh, ending the affair with your professor. <laughs> and uh, him crawling at your feet, you in that same posture like this. And you breaking up with him with the same William Blake quote that he first seduced you with? In Colin Quinn's bed. She's only human. All right, we'll be right back after this. If you think all batteries are the same. Just won a featherweight championship. And, uh, and the jeans, I liked, because they were, they were so tight that you had to be poured into them. You had to lay on a bed to pull them up, which probably didn't matter because you were going to wind up there anyway. <laughs> so it was a good thing. You know? <laughs> Bobby Collins. We were poor, so poor people used to come over to my house just to feel better about themselves. <laughs> I would say my favorite fashion trend back then were these Nick Nick shirts. Those were the tight, upscale shirts displaying party scenes that I knew I'd, I'd never be invited to anyway. I, uh, I like the poncho, because you first of all, you can hide drugs under it, you know? <laughs> and liquor, you go to the concerts, and it made you look pe peaceful and spiritual, but you didn't look... <laughs> Punky, because Kwai Chan King used to wear one at this time, and Clint Eastwood would wear one. And that's how tough Clint Eastwood really was. He could <laughs> look tough wearing the same outfit that my sister wore to the concert for Bangladesh. <laughs> I should have said no nukes. Damn it. Well, if our show seemed a little small tonight, don't worry, you'll grow into it. Good night. Good night.